friends, let's talk about gold. This little video is going to be a sort of sister video to the one hour legionary video I did a little while ago, but instead of filthy rotten steel, we're going to look at good old gold. And what do you know, we don't even have to leave the ranks of the best Space Marine Legion out there, because if we go back in time a little to the 31st millennium, the word bearers sported not the red and silver livery 40k players will be familiar with, but a rather fetching gold and grey combo instead. Why then am I painting this 40k warp talon red? Well. 40k talons, because the warp knows not our myopic concept of linear time, and red because… warmth. If you've watched basically any of my videos, you'll know I'm a proponent of branching out from black with base coats, and today is no exception. That burgundy is blasted from below with a layer of burnt umber to up the richness and start making moves towards our shadows, and when that's done, we can move on to the metallics. That's right, if you haven't seen the one hour legionary video, you might not have realised that what we've actually been doing here this whole time is prepping the model to paint the metallic trim, not the grey panels. So, as long as you have a good paint to handle your panel colour and a strategy for shading it, this should be a much faster way to a finished Chaos Space Marine. We don't want to jump straight into the gold though. First off, the lads all get an almost all over coat of copper. Metallics need as much attention paid to their shading and lighting as any other paint, and this copper makes for a nice warm shadow tone. Copper on, we can hit it with some actual gold, and since this is a commission I'm skipping out on mixing custom blends in case my client likes these guys enough to order more. Although it's not so hard to mix up a matching tone, it's faster and you get better guaranteed consistency if you can just use paints straight out of the pot. This layer I approach like a zenithal highlight, leaving copper on the lower and downward facing surfaces. This Vallejo gold though, while easy to use and offering great coverage, is not the goldiest of golds, so I have one last little trick to up the look here, and it's inks. I start with a quick undershade with Vallejo skin wash ink, just to really send home the rich shadows, and then do a super speedy filter of yellow ink over most of the mini. And that's the trim done. It may seem like a complicated approach, but everything you've seen, from the base coat to this yellow filter at the end, took under 30 minutes for all five models, including cleaning out the airbrush and occasionally faffing with my camera. So lots of moving parts, but the parts all move very quickly. Ok, if we were painting overgrown custodies lap dogs, we'd basically be done, but the heralds here need a little more attention, so time to tackle the panels. The key to this trim first approach is having a good, solid paint option for your panels. You need a colour that's close to your desired highlight tone, maybe a shade under it, and it needs to be liquidy and super opaque. For that, the best paint I've found on the market so far are Molotow One For All. The fluid consistency will mean the paint runs easily into the corners and crannies, and the opacity will mean you won't go nuts doing a thousand coats. Now that's all groovy, but we've ended up with a pretty flat looking series of panels. It'd be a bit strange to spend so much time shading that gold if we didn't add some light to the armour itself, and that trick will be achieved with oils. First off, an all over coat of black. The colour you use will depend on your panel colour of course, and your desired effect, but since I'm going for grey here, black will work just fine. I would recommend taking your time with a slightly smaller brush and applying only to the panel areas if your shade colour here doesn't also double up as a passable oil and grime effect. I'm planning a deeper dive on oil paints and timing for another video, but let's say here that after about 10 minutes in very hot weather mind you, I went in to start the cleaning and blending process. 
This involves some cotton buds to pick up excess oil paint where we don't want it, and then a big soft brush to gently swoosh over and all around to blend and fade the light and dark patches. Your blending brush should be nice and dry and frequently cleaned off on a dry paper towel, but you can also moisten up another brush or a cotton bud to pick up even more oil paint and really pop certain areas. And if you fancy even more pop, you can even paint in some highlights. Again, because I was using grey, a nice and easy white highlight worked best for me, but obviously adjust it to whatever works for you. The general premise here is to lay on lines or spots of paint where you want your highlights to be strongest and then grab that dry swooshy brush again and very gently feather out the highlight. Once you get the hang of it, it's a very relaxing and easy process. Any paint that you get on your precious trim can also be cleaned up easily with a mineral spirits damp brush. And with all that done, you should only have your detailing and edge highlighting left to do. Now, these guys did clock in a little over an hour each because of their slightly more complicated warp blessings and more intricate trim, or rather the panel shapes, but they still went nice and quickly while managing to not look rushed or half done. If you enjoyed this video and want to help other people find it, hit the like button and subscribe for weekly content of this ilk if you fancy it. There's also a dedicated Discord server linked in the description, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have in the comments too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!